I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Pinamasco to introduce our guest speaker. He can say a few remarks and then he'll give his presentation. <coughs> Thank you, Prof. Good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, our guest speaker, as the name is on the board, is Javier Fernandez Castanon. I hope I've pronounced it well. He will make sure that uh, he tells us how he pronounces it. He contacted me and uh, being that he was doing some volunteering work here in Uganda, he thought it would be nice to come and talk to third year students, faculty, faculty means members of staff, and then uh, any other interested party so that there could be any chance of collaboration. And, uh, the topic he chose is a school on particle physics and a school during the future, because this is the future research that is taking place uh, almost worldwide. Everyone is interested in going beyond the earth. <coughs> so he will, uh, in the new course, he will be able to tell us what has been working on, how we can benefit, and uh, the rest is in charge. So John can tell us more about uh, what we can, or how we can do it. <coughs> so that is okay. I allow you to give us your part. Well, good morning, everybody, first of all. Mm -hmm. My name is, uh, yeah, I guess pronounced more or less, or at least, Javi Fernandez de Young. I'm Spanish. I'm working in France, between the uh, in the Institute of Northern Development. We're working with neutrons, it's a nuclear reactor, as a neutron uh, exploration source. And um, I'm working also in, in the other, then I'll show you a picture that these institutes are just in the border between France and Switzerland. So the center is a um, <coughs> the European uh, Commission for the Research for Nuclear Physics. And um, the last part, so we are talking, we are working on particle physics. The particle physics has a very good application in astronomy because most of the particles we have in the so which in the end are coming from the universe, so that allow us to study the, the universe strongly. And the last part of the is the future. So I want to show you how many opportunities you can find, not only in Africa, but also in Europe, is where you're coming from. Last year, I, I made a presentation outside of the same, something like that, in, in Kenya, in Nairobi. Now we're on the Gales, in the Nairobi, in the Nairobi University, and now it's in Germany. So I will show you that there are more opportunities beyond the U.S. So first of all, I would like to uh, introduce you. I should be only to introduce this small, so that the fundamentals of particle physics. I don't know how much is uh, your knowledge about particle physics, about the uh, quantum mechanics and its fundamental interactions. So we will represent for you the building block. So it's the, more, the smallest particles that constitute all the matter as far as you know by right now. And um, yeah, as I told you before, is there any opportunity for you in Europe? Okay. So first of all, be awake, please, don't sleep. So what you will hear now can better tell your perception, your perception of reality. We are, we are going deep in a world that is it's our world, but it's completely different than we can see and we can interact every day. So we are in a quantum world with another uh, laws, with another we don't have the gravity, we can feel the gravity. Protons and neutrons in the nucleus, but then they have a core of electrons uh, for being around. The electron was the first elementary particle that has been discovered by Thomson in the 19th century. And then we thought that, okay, well, so at some point we discovered that the nucleus are made of protons and neutrons, but we went beyond. And we found that the protons and neutrons are made of of more fundamental particles that remain quarks. So from the atom to the quark, how small are these quarks, the smallest constitutes of matter? We don't know yet if, if there's something inside the quark. We think that it's not. But well, the science always evolved, so we cannot we can never say we have the final answer. So if the atom is I said before is 10 to minus 10 meters, the quark we're talking is almost a half, it's 10 so not almost half is Almost the eight orders of magnitude is more, it's 10 to minus 18 meters. 
And um, what's the problem? We cannot see this atom. We cannot see, well, the atom we can see now with a very good atomic microscopy, but we cannot see the parts because, because the problem is that the atom and the subatomic particles, as much as more than any wavelength, any uh, visible light we can use. So we cannot really see them. Okay, we can suppose, we can interact with them with some fundamental interaction, but we cannot see with our eyes or with our devices. So, this is one of the most fundamental laws of the quantum mechanics. And it, and it said it was uh, set up at the degree, and they, they showed all the moving particles as an equivalent wave lambda. We can relate lambda with momentum with this inverse uh, relation. And one of the applications of both the particle and the, and the wave behavior of the of this uh, particle are the electron microscope. So here, so here you can see how the electron microscope nice is like 0 to 0.2 nanometers apart. And we can differentiate more or less the atom distribution of these uh, gold atoms, okay? But um, what about Rutherford? They talk about uh, uh, Tom's Malabar and Rutherford like only 13 years later. So Rutherford, using this experiment that I'm sure that you, you heard before, showed using a, a what's the name? A, well, a field of uh, gold that the atoms are not fundamental particles. That there's something inside, or something inside these atoms. So he throw up particles, and what he saw is that some of these other particles, these nucleus of helium atoms, were um, deviated from the original uh, trajectory. So that means that there should be something inside the atoms. So if the, if the alpha particles, these are the atoms go out, go atoms, okay? So the alpha particles interact directly with the nucleus, they were coming back. But if the alpha particles go more or less around the nucleus because of the electronic, the nucleus are positive charged, the alpha particles will be the VA and the VA. If the nucleus is very far from the alpha particles, the alpha particles just go straight, okay? So just using a, a, a gold foil, you could demonstrate that there was something inside the atoms. But then, we went farther in the, in the 60s, in the late 60s, and we saw that, okay, there is not only the protons and neutrons, but there is something inside these protons. So this is in California, in Stanford, and what they, and they did here is that using an OS array of only straight, two miles, then you will see how, how big it's set. So to my eyes, it's around six and a half kilometers, I think. No, sorry. 3.2 kilometers. Yeah. So they find reflections at the crossroad, and they saw big deflections. Well, like deflection in the of so before in the nucleus in the gold, in the gold foil. So it, it was something like that. OK? Just find the electrons in the end station. So it's Experimental area, they put some protons and they saw very big deflections. Saying that inside the protons there's also something. What is inside the protons? So in the quantum model, they, they name these particles quarks. Not our, we are using this as a representation as uh, spheres, but they are not real, okay? So the, the graphical representation. So they saw that, okay, we can call these particles quarks, but the quarks have a fractional electric charge. That's one of the reasons we, we say this fractional electric charge and not just a simple charge like electrons and protons 1 minus 1 and for the neutrons 0. We have to give a fractional electric charge because the, the quarks have been never ever seen alone. They are always together. They are in groups of 3 or 2 but always together, never alone. So for example, in the, in the proton we have 2 quarks up, u, u, and 1 quark down, so we have 2 3 divided by 3 plus 3 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 3, that is 4 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 3 is 1. So it's the, the charge of a proton. What about the neutron? We have one, only one part up and two quarts down. So we have here in the, in the yellow, but you have 2 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 0. That's why the neutron is neutral, has no charge. 
So we, have, we can see that only with two kind of plus up and down, we have the protons and the neutrons. And then, as I, I told you before, that the electrons are element, elementary particles. So with electrons, quarks up and quarks down, we have all the matter we know, because we can create all the atoms. But the, it's only the universe um, made up of these electrons, quarks up and down? No. The, the answer is there are also neutrinos. So what about the neutrinos? We can say if the electrons and protons and neutrons are rarities, because for each one of them, we can find one billion neutrinos in the universe. Neutrinos they are the most common mass particles in the universe. And only in one centimeter to here, we can, in this, in this case, we can find about 300 neutrinos that are coming directly from the Big Bang, from the first explosion, okay? For what we think created the universe. So, studying these neutrinos can give us, can provide us a lot of information about the origin of the universe. And that's what we are trying to do. The problem with the neutrinos, I will show you later, is that even if the neutrinos are everywhere, in the outer space, in the air, here in this room, coming from the Big Bang, the neutrinos you know harm us because they are transparent. We can say we have no detectors to, to analyze these neutrinos. We know that they are everywhere, but we cannot analyze them. So fortunately we cannot detect us because, sorry, because 10 to 14 neutrinos per second, per second, each second from the sun are seeing us from us. Okay? So if the neutrinos can help us, can interrupt with us, now we will not hear. I, 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 I wrote there that we feel euphoria at any instant, so it's like any second, around 30 million, 30 million neutrinos from the Big Bang are coming. So you can imagine that everything around us is neutrinos. There are now some kind of detectors in the in Antarctic, but they are trying with the with the eyes trying to close these neutrinos to make them slower and trying to, to have time enough to analyze the properties. So we can try to pass on the neutrinos because they have no interactions, so only weak interaction. They can cross, they, they, don't, they don't interact with nothing in the universe. So it allows allow them to cross just light years and light years of universe from the, from the Big Bang to the Earth in this moment without being affected. So they can travel from most remote areas of the universe, you can't find them. And they can, that's good because they can bring information from the origin of this space at this time coming from. So the materials actually, we can say that even if we cannot interact with them, do matter to us. Because just simply, if there were no materials, the sun would not shine. And we need the sun. So what are, where are the materials? We can Protons, helium, and then to compensate the shell we have two electrons, two positrons, sorry, two neutrinos, and some energy. Fusion, that's fusion. When we fusion protons, we have nucleus of helium, but then we have also this. And because of this energy, the sun can shine, and the energy coming from the sun can help our plants to grow, can help us, can, okay? And it's just because of this energy. Okay, so now, the particles of ordinary masses. We have leptons, like, I will show you then the, the table, that is leptons, we have neutrinos and electrons. And then we have the quarks, so you can force this up and down. So, now, we have to add one more element. All the stuff and matter around us can be described using electrons, neutrinos, and quarks, up and down. No more. All the matter in the universe, our bodies, the table, the planets, the stars, the asteroids, everything we can see and we can interact in the universe. So all the matter in the universe, only these four components. So anyone knows what is that? Have you ever seen this before? Okay, probably what you what you have seen is the Give you one minute.
This is what I want to show you. This is the ice cube experiment. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the ice cube. So it's a source for neutrino observatory. With this instrument, we are trying to probe these uh, neutrinos and analyze them with time and off. So basically, it's like these two poles are very deep, like 100 meters down in the ice. It's a very strong ice. It's very pure ice. It's not contaminated. And the neutrinos can throw, come from the neutrinos and throw this ice. And because of the low temperatures, they just go, they lost energy and they slow the speed. Okay. So this is it. I want to show you. So what? Well, coming back here. This is like in chemistry, we have like a modality of periodic table. So it's like, we have like hydrogen, helium, gold, all the components, all the elements. Here, we have all the elements, but the basic elements of the matter. So it's the quarks up and down, We've been talking before. We have the electrons, you know that, you know that. And then we have here three neutrinos. Because that similar to the electron, we have it's cosine, we can say it's a bit broader, so it's like mu. The, the, the same properties look, the shell is minus one, minus one. One and a half, one and a half, minus one, minus one. Okay? So it's like the spins, the charts are very similar. Well actually the same. Well the first is the mass. Look, the difference in mass. 0.5 mega electron volts for the electron, 105 for the mu, and 1.7 for tau. So for each electron, like this, for each electron, mu, and tau, we have electron neutrino, mu neutrino, tau neutrino. And then here we have the quarks, not only these two, but now we know that there are four quarks more. So it's charm, top, stretch, and bottom. So if for the matter, we only need these four, the quarks up and down, neutrinos, and electrons. What about all that? We know that the data exists because of the, the theory, because of the experiments, but they are not constitutes of the matter. So, it's an open question. If they are constitutes of something that is not matter, what are they doing in the universe? Is there something else in matter in the universe? Thank you. Have you heard some, some, someone before about antimatter? about dark energy, okay? So maybe they can provide us information about this. And then we have these forces. Photon grew a big force, and not a weak force. What about that? Maybe if a person like this, you don't know, but a person like the photon, electromagnetism, nuclear, uh, nuclear strong interactions, the weak force for radioactivity, but I, I talk about three forces, electromagnetism, weak force, and a strong force. Is there another fundamental interaction? Grab, grab. Okay? Well, first of all, these are the, first, the three families I, to, I, I told you before. In the first generation, for the ordinary matter, neutral, uh, neutrinos, quark up and down and electrons, cosmic rays. We have these, and then accelerators, we can study all of that. I told you that the, the, it's more or less everything is similar, but the difference is only in the mass. So we believe that these are fundamental building blocks of mass. Okay. Okay. Now, this you have to know that. I think from the, from the first year in the university. Interactions. What is, what, what is this interaction? Why the apple falls down and no up? Gravity. Okay. Mechanics, friction, and fire combustion, the oxygen, magnetism, electricity coming from the sky to the landings, fusion in the sun. I told you, the sun is shining because of the of the protons. It comes in the element nucleus and then provides some energy that can fly only 8 minutes from the sun. So all the things I've been before are producing only four basic interaction of forces. 
the most basic interaction discovered by Newton around the 18th century is a gravity, gravitational interaction. And the main responsible for the gravitational wind, the main um, thing we can, we can see that the gravity is around us, but we are well planted on the air, we are not flying, we are not going out to the sky. But then we have electromagnetic interaction. So we can, where we use electromagnetism nowadays, like every moment, like in the lights, in the wires, in the TVs, PC, PCs, laptops, but also in more fundamental experiments like the electron positron creation. And then we have the nucleus, so like the strong nuclear force. In the nucleus, I told you before that there, is only, there are only protons and neutrons. So what is the charge? Neutrons have no charge, and protons only positive charge. So we know, the basic of electromagnetism, the same charge provokes the repulsion between the particles. So why did the, the nucleus are condensed together and the protons are not going away? It's because of this, the strong force is a quark binding. The quarks are like connected. Okay? This is a proton, up, up, down, and are connected and trying to put the quarks together. And last but not least is the weak force. So here we have this radioactivity. This is the, the composition beta, so the beta decay, sorry. And from one neutron we can have proton, an electron, a neutrino, an anti-neutrino. So here we have the composition, the radioactivity, because of the weak force. But what is the order of these interactions? We can say that if the strong force is the magnitude of one, Compared to the strong nuclear force, the electromagnetic is 100 times weaker. It's 10 to minus 2. 10 to minus 5 for the weak force. And what do you think about the gravity? How strong is the gravity, the gravitational force? Do you think it's a strong one? It's a strong one. It's absolutely weak. And I can show you that. <coughs> we have a magnet. I don't know if this magnet is around. But well, anyway, this bag is not too heavy as well. Three kilos. My weight is around 74 kilos, and I'm not very strong. And I can pull this bag up just with one hand. I can throw the bag at least like two tables in this direction. So my 74 kilos and only one arm is putting up this bag. Even if the earth, all the earth, all the plant is pulling the, the, the bag down. Okay, so you can imagine how weak it is. If I put this, and I have a magnet here. If you put the magnet here, this will go up. Even if the, all the air is going this, that is trying to pull this down. And this is a small magnet, it doesn't need more bigger than this. So that's why the electromagnetic force is, if the electromagnetic force is 10 to minus 2, the gravitational force is 10 to minus 40, is absolutely weak. But it's also absolutely important keep us here. Okay, and now, it's the time I, I showed you before this. That was happening with a mirror. So, for every fundamental particle of this table, we can create an antiparticle. So that if you, if you look at us in a mirror, if you put these hands here in the mirror, this hand will be here, so like the opposite. So, all the particles involved, here and there have the same mass and properties. Also, only differs in the charge. They have opposite charge. So, an example for the for example, is the electron. The charge minus one, we know, the spin minus one by the G and the mass. The positron is the antiparticle, so it's the same laser, but we have to, to change the sign because the charge is the opposite. So the charge, as I said, is not minus 1 anymore, it's plus 1. The spin is not minus 1, it's plus. But the mass is exactly the same. Okay? So we can create antimatter. But to create antimatter, we have to create matter to compensate the energy, momentum, this conservation loss. So the electron and can be created in some bubble chamber just eating photons 
Um, and when we hit photos, so the photos are live, so are energy, we can use this energy to uh, convert this energy in mass and antimatter. matter There's a simple equation of Einstein's. Energy is equal to mass per multiplied by the speed of light to square, twice, so to square. And the mass and antimatter to concentrate this momentum, we have to make like a, sp a spiral in opposite directions. So if one is coming here, the other has to go there because of the magnetic field. Okay? The magnetic field, if we, if we put only one magnetic field, it, it will affect differently to these particles because one is charged, positive charge and the other is negative. So at the end of the day, the, the laws of conservation of energy and momentum are still working. And that's the last thing about quarks. I told you before that the quarks cannot be alone. They, they can never be found isolated. So the quarks have to combine them to create colorless particles. It's one of the properties of the quarks. It's not the charge, but the color. So for example, with the great variants that are the kind of particles, we have to use the three quarks with colors red, green, and blue. So at the end, the colorless particle is white. And this is the protein. If we only use two, we have to, we can create meshes. So to create white, we have to use red and anti-red. And this, for example, like pyro. The strong forces glue these quarks together in just bold state. So that's why the problem is a problem, and it's not something that can break up easily. OK. About the weight force, the, it was an experiment Doing this experiment is how the, um, the scientists discover that there is something else. There's, there are the neutrinos. Why? Look, this is a neutron, okay? What happened? For a neutron, we created a proton, a neutron, I'm oh, sorry, a proton, an electron, an anti neutrino. So everything is concerned the mass, the energy, and the momentum. more than something like that. <coughs> the ne the ne neutrons can be carried by a lot there. When they have a very long lifetime, around 50 minutes, 50 minutes can seem that it's not too much, but for a particle like with these properties, it's a an eternity. It's like most of the particles they carry in 10 to minus 6 seconds. So 50 minutes is absolutely an eternity for, for particle physics. So that's why the problem is uh, this, this uh, force weak. Uh, as I told you before, we need this interaction between the weak and can seem not very important because if not, the sun will shut down and will be without energy. So we'll be dead. We'll be like the moon, we'll be like the moon. And asterisk, just, we have to turn around that. Around here. Okay, the electromagnetic force. We have two electrons with the same charge, obviously minus one. If we put two electrons together, what will happen? Same charge, they will try to go away, to be separated. But how are they? The electrons are funny, but they don't have eyes, they don't have mouths to talk, to say, hey, you are another particle, but you are, your charge is negative or positive. What do I have to do? Be attracted by you or you refuse? So how is that? How is, what is its mouth or its eyes to see if the other particle has the same charge or the opposite. They have to use a like, mobile phone to talk about that. So what they use is a photo. <laughs> Something like that. Try to change the photo. Okay, so now you have the same charge that I have to separate. If it would be a proton and an electron, okay, the electrons and the photon, or you have protons, so now we can be together. So the photon is a particle associated to the electromagnetic core. It's a smallest bundle of this core. Okay? Something like that. The electron, say the photon, so it's the gamma, and then they go away again. And these diagrams are thanks to this man, is famous, and he won the, the Nobel just because of these diagrams. Very useful. Okay. The strong force, gluons, more or less the same. We have the quarks, so it's the letter Q, 
and they have to change, they, have, they are binded by the, by the gluons. So the gluons interact with the quarks. Okay? I like the photos for the electromagnetic core, but now in the strong one. And the gluons have the property also have the property also to interact with another gluons. Take the right side. Okay. I told you like three times there are no free quarks, they are always confined in a coreless doublet, great muscles for triplets to get virus like protons and neutrons. So okay, what do you have to do? We have particle set there. You have to change and the uh, That's why they are confined. Something like that. We decay in two. Okay? Two walls. Two quarks. And the, the blue ones is like this blue string. Hold the quarks together and they, they try to separate, but because of the blue ones, are, like, it's not easy for them. But if they have more energy, they can separate a little bit more until they, they, they arrive. Like, well, it's not clear, but if I have a white and I decide to do it like this, they like this, like this, it will arrive one moment and I will break it. So it's more than the same, but when they break, they decay again and they create the connection snaps and they, so they have to create another quark and anti quark. Why quark and anti quark? Because the energy and the momentum conservation. So another one pair is created out of this energy. So a lot of, if you put a lot of energy, you will break it. But with this energy, we can, we can create another particle. Something like that. So now we have two pairs. At the end, the new quarks can bold again. So we have new messages. Two quarks. Okay. So to sum up, Force particles summary. The particles interact, interact and or decay thanks to these four fundamental forces. But also the forces can be responsible to bind these particles together. Like for example, I told you before the strong with the gluons only affect the quarks, the weak force affecting these particles is W plus W minus and Z. The electromagnetic charge electrons and then the gravity. I, I didn't talk about gravity yet. Why? Because we don't have this gamma or these gluons or these particles. We don't have the gravity. We don't have a fundamental particle. So uh, still, we need to discover. And if it is six, it has negative, negative energy effects on the particles. So even if it was by Newton, the first classical force discovered, now in the quantum world, we are not able to find this, this particle. We don't know if it doesn't exist or just we don't have the technology to do that yet. So the physicists try to put together all this information like in the standard model. With the quarks, the leptons and the forces. So we have for the matter six quarks and six leptons, we have the three generations of so the shall before, and then we have the forces electroweak is strong. What if electroweak is like when we put together the electromagnetism and the weak force, the high energies. But there is no gravity, there is no quantum field theory of gravity, of gravity yet. But what we discovered at CERN in 2012, is like only two years ago, is this particle. I don't know if you heard about the Higgs boson. Have you heard about the Higgs boson? <laughs> okay. This particle was discovered in CERN and working now in 2012. And is the final answer, we think, to justify why these particles have a different mass. What is the mass? We know what is the mass, but it's not weight. The mass is a property, like an inner property of the particles, like the charge. And we understand why the electrons are the charge, because of the electromagnetism, the quantum electromagnetism theory, but we don't know nothing about the gravity. So the mass is something that the, the particles have different, because the proton has not the same mass, or the quad up, up and down, they don't have the same mass. And it's because they're interaction with this Higgs field. The Higgs field is like a sea spread all around the universe, full of Higgs bosons, and the particles interact with them. So now we want to 
go one step further, one step beyond, and trying to unify all, all these forces. The electromagnetic is the strong and the weak. We can unify that. But we cannot do that the same with the gravity because we don't have this gravity. So we are trying, we are looking for a simple nanic and unified theory. Something like that. I don't know if it would be possible to. I think it will, it will be in the future, but not now. Trying to find this unified force. So now it's an open question for you. I don't have the answer, that's why it's an open question. So why is the universe made of matter and not in the same amount of antimatter? I told you before that when we create matter, we have to create antimatter in the same quantity to preserve this momentum and energy. But in the universe, this doesn't work, it's not that what happens. <coughs> so we have seen that for every fundamental particle, there is a corresponding antiparticle. But what are these antiparticles? In the universe, they are not in the same amount. So we have a large amount of matter, but we don't have evidence of large amount of antimatter in the universe. Is that, is there, there is much more ma anti matter than antimatter. So what's happening with this energy and momentum conservation all that they are not in the same amount? We don't know. It's not interesting. If you know if you someone you know the answer, you will fly to Westerholm directly to take your Nobel Prize. So the question now is why has all the antimatter gone? Because if the matter and antimatter interacts, this happens. Okay? So hopefully. It's a good thing for us that there is not antimatter around. We are matter. If it is antimatter affecting <coughs> us, so thanks God there is not antimatter. So the development of the universe intended matter and no antimatter. And that's what this only has one easily first conclusion and that the matter and the antimatter behave differently. How the universe affected the matter is not the same way that affects the antimatter. And this phenomenon is a CP violation. Is like a CP violation. CP is charge implication in part. So the charge implication is reverse charge, but also we have to reverse the spatial coordinate, like again, like the mirror. So we have to really model here the, like, the beauty, but with the charge, the CP violation, we have the anti beauty. Okay? So the, the, the point is that they became a pattern as a food in the, along the time, as a function of the time, is different. That's why the matter and antimatter is like a theory. With the theory we are working on now. And well, nobody is perfect up here. So with the standard model, we discovered only the elements our planet is made up. But also we can describe the rest of the solar system, the sun, the galaxy the stars we can see, and the stars we cannot see also, because we know that there are much more stars and most, yeah, much more galaxies. We're far away, we cannot see, but they are there. So, is that everything there is in the universe? What do you think? No. The answer is always no. So we already have experimental results that completes the existence of two things. I told you before, it's dark matter, it's not visible in the electromagnetic spectrum, but it's like cold, very cold matter, and we have also the dark energy. About the dark energy, we are completely lost, is that it has an unknown origin for us, and it fills up, fills up the universe, and it has a very, very like, unbelievable effect in the universe, and it, like, it makes, it expands the universe faster and faster. So the universe now is in continued expansion, but not at the same speed, it's like an accelerating space, it's air expansion. So the total universe, energy in the universe, is only 4.6% atoms of our matter. So we now can almost understand this 4.6, but it's still is 23 of that matter that we don't have any idea about, and 72% about that energy. So they, we know that these things are in the universe, but we don't know what they are and how they work. So another open question. What is the dark matter? The, some astronomical observation and some that observe dark matter <coughs> represent less than the 4% of the universe. 
So we have the left side of this master and then the right side of that master. This is not real code, it's just made with the computer trying to write up the density of this mass. And yeah, we don't know how it is, what it is uh, in that matter. So perhaps, maybe, it's a partially composed of neutrinos or neutralinos, so the antiparticles. And trying to, the next step now we form the Higgs boson, so we almost finish with the matter with this 4%. It's trying to go here to this uh, antimatter. So we have a supersymmetric theory trying to help us uh, find these answers. So probably in the next years, um, if we achieve more now the same, I will show you later, it's a stop because we are, try we are, we are changing the magnets, trying to um, achieve highest order of energy. And it will allow us to, to study the, the supersymmetric, check the supersymmetric series and try to go in and understand a bit more the, the dark matter. As you can imagine, it's not easy to study all these events because of the, the small size of these particles, the high energies they have. We have to consider that these particles we are we're using protons are on the speed of the light, so it's 300,000 kilometers per second. And it's not easy for a person to have in a laboratory. So we need some tools to study particle physics, and we call them accelerators. So the particle physics studies the matter in its minor dimensions. But what is, I think, one of the nicest things in, uh, in the modern physics is that the same laws we, we have to use, we have to study the smallest, the minor dimensions of the, of the matter of the universe, which is 32 minus 15 meters, are the same we have to study the biggest and most and twice more dimensions of the universe. So that the astrophysics is the planets, the galaxies to stay to 24 meters. But obviously, to study the map, to, to see the moon, for example, we have to use a uh, telescope, and to see a problem, we can use a telescope, we have to use an accelerator or a vector. Maybe for small dimensions, but we, if we want to go deep in this, in this uh, scale, we have to use the detectors. So different instruments are best for objects at different dimensions, obviously. But at the end, the, the, the physics laws are exactly the same for the biggest and for the smallest. And that's what we are doing, basically. We have two particle beams running at the speed of light, 99.999999999% of the speed of light in both directions, one going right and going left. And at some points, it's like the train, we just cross the lines and they collide. So one particle beam has EH uh, energy and the other EH <coughs> prime. And look, they collide. You can imagine if you throw uh, a particle at the speed of light and another particle at the speed of light and they collide. Then like if you have a car at four, 40 km per hour, we have another car at 40 km per hour, and they collide at 80 km per hour the total speed of the cars, they, they will feel this energy. So it's something like that, but not at 40 km per hour, 300,000 km per second. So at low energies, here you have the bar, the yellow bar, the accelerator energy, okay? So on the left, we have kind of a helicopter, we can, we can, we can draw with more. Uh, on the right, we have another one, the same. If they have low energies, it like is something like that. So we can break in some pieces because of the collision. The same way you would break your car if you collide. If we increase to the orbits, the bar energy, the speed will be increased as well. And we can break the smallest part, so we can go deep in the dimensions, we can study a little bit further. And what happens if we just achieve the maximum energy, so like the energy is at the speed of light? Did you know that there is nothing in the universe that can travel faster than light? So, we have large amount of energies. And we can only break, but with this energy, thanks to this equation that says basically that if the speed of light is a constant, the energy and the mass are the same. Okay? So if we have energy, we will have mass. But to create this mass we need to achieve a very we need to reach a very, very high levels of energy. 
But with these accelerator images, we can do that. So when we collide and set these particles, we are creating not only energy, but also this energy will create mass. And mass means we, can, we are creating new particles that we can study. Particles with charge, with properties like quarks, for example. So the energy from the collision has been used to create something new. That, what is unbelievable, this something new that these dinosaurs we create, we have created. They the were among the initial components. So from something evil, we, uh, we, we, we create something completely new that we can study. Okay, obviously we are not creating dinosaurs, but we are doing something like that. If you check, if you, if you want to explore the particles interior, you can use, for example, electrons and positrons with matter and antimatter. I showed you before the other because it's matter and antimatter. So we can create new particles from this other level of energy, that is free energy. Okay? The matter will disappear, but the energy is conserved, you cannot destroy energy. So the energy used in the matter of the energy in the particle now is used to create new particles. So this is the setup of a circular particle accelerator. We have to send in one direction the protons, in the other the antiprotons. They have the same properties, but opposite shares. So to cool the trajectories, we have some points, some magnets in the in accelerator, and to accelerate, we have like pushers. So the particles being sun run in opposite directions, following different courses, they are not in the same line. And only when we want them to collide, we just we just cross this line in some points we want. That is where we have the detectors and they can photo cameras. But how can we accelerate these particles? Yes, okay, the proton has charge, so we can use magnets. If we put a, 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 a proton with a positive, a positive charge, and if it's a positive magnet, we repulse. And if it, then I put a negative magnet in the track. So it's like positive, negative, positive, all around 27 kilometers accelerator, the proton will be like this. Okay? So it's something like that. We have to see that we have more than 9,000 small magnets. Well, it's more something like that. Okay? So it's a lot of magnets. But now we have to change some of them. Well, to cover the beams, it's just using a magnetic field. Okay? I don't want to explain too much a lot about that. But just because if you are doing like this, for example, with your car, you have to like a fixed but of a speed of 50 km per hour and then you arrive in the car, in the road, you have to, to break a little bit the car because you know you go out the road. And if you want to, to preserve your speed, you will feel how the, the wheel will start like, making noises because of the friction. It has energy, the car is losing. It's the same in here, but this energy for the particles not friction is what we call synchrotron radiation. And only the charged particles release this radiation and they lose part of this energy. So then we have to accelerate again. And here is, I told, I told you at the beginning, I, here you know that the Europeans have like borders now because of the European Union, so there is not like a war or nothing like that, there are no countries to come from, from one country to the other. But the border, the border between France and Sweden is something like this road here, okay? So I live here in France just because the the apartments are much, much cheaper than in Switzerland. But the main offices of the server are here. And then the acceleration is 100 meters underground, so you can see here with your eyes, you have to go down in the air. But it's 27 kilometers, both in Switzerland and France. We have here a small one, it was our first accelerator like in the last 60s. And now we use this accelerator to just to give the initial energies to the protons, to provide them with some energy some initial energy, and then when we have enough energy to collide, we just put in a big accelerator, it's at 27 kilometers, and the proton starts 1,000 times, 1,000 laps per second. So what about the same today? Here you have the flags in Germany, Austria, Belgium, Hungary, Spain, Finland, Greece, like a lot of flags. So the same is needed by 20 European countries. The blue, they are painted in blue. The, it's basically 
most of Europe. This is Spain, this is Morocco, Egypt. Sorry, Tunisia, Egypt is somewhere here. And only Ireland, I think, and this Croatia, this Balkanic country, that now they have some political problems. But basically, most of the countries in Europe, they leave the, the, the cell. And this is because of the E in cell, C E R L, the E is because of Europe. So it's like European cell. But anyway, you think, okay, only Europe is working that now. All the, the countries, they have some code in this map. They are working, they are cooperating directly or indirectly in seven. So, okay, the blue ones are the, the countries that have to put the money and they, they take the main decisions. But then, to analyze all this amount of data, you have to see that all the data provided by um, we have in seven is that in only 20 minutes, if we put all the data we have from the computers in CD ROMs, in only 20 minutes we will have a total of CD ROMs, like 200 meters. See that the, I don't know, it's like the Galapagos ROMs tower, mm -hmm. but like three times like that. It's very, very big. And for example, in 1991, because of these amounts of data that we cannot manage, because it's not easy to travel with, the, with your sweet cases full of CD ROMs. The one guy in England decided to buy okay, we can put this data somewhere in the in the in the air, nothing physically that we have to, to carry out in the place, but we can put some somewhere and then take that in Sweden or I, or I go back to England. I can take this data from this place. And this this was a way how the world the world wide web has been created with the internet basically. And it was invented in CERN, and thanks to that, that CERN has no um, like trademarks or copyrights. We can use internet by free. Well, not by free because we are paying now to MTN or IFTA or whatever, but you are paying them just because you are using the network here. But the internet is absolutely free. If not each time you want to go on Facebook, just one click, you will have to pay like, I don't know, 20 shillings <coughs> each time. The same way when you are drinking a coke, you are part of the money you are being paid for, the, for this coke is going to the man that inventing the, the tip. You can the coke. So what? Basically, we have the member states in blue in Europe, but then we have observer states. So like India, Israel, Russia, Turkey, USA, and Japan. And then other countries. So it's around 1,205 people are uh, the countries in red. So what well, you can see, that we're showing now, is basically all the world except the central countries in Africa, um, well, Turkmenistan, Greenland, but Africa is also in seven. This, the numbers are the users in 2010 now, I tried to ask the last week, but I think how this information actualized now. Um, but in 2010, now it's more, this number. The, in Algeria there were eight scientists working for seven, six in Egypt, one in Ethiopia, two in Kenya, Morocco, Senegal, South Africa, Tunisia. So, well, Uganda is not too far. Uh, here around. Yes. You have to you have to read this red course. So now this is, the, this is the accelerator that is 100 meters on the ground. Is it, what is that? You cannot see the protons obviously, but the protons are running here inside. The standards, okay? These blue ones. It's 37 kilometers there. It's about 50,000 meters. And it's unbelievable. It's 27 kilometers and if you go, you can, you can use a bike here. This, if you will be walking, you will spend like the whole week just walking around. You can just buy your kind of water water. <laughs> so uh, what we have is basically around 2,808 packs with 10 to 11 protons each. The, the, the tunnel is filled, absolutely completely filled and with protons. And they run in the stream of 27 kilometers with the speed. 99.99999% .99 .99 speed of light. Mm -hmm. And the time 
more than 1,000 laps per second, per second. So the collisions, basically, the, 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 the tunnel is a feeling of crossings everywhere. It's not like just one bag, it's 2,800 bags. So there are like around 40 million collisions per second, per second. So you can imagine how much more information we can we can have in our computers. It's an unbelievable the amount of information. So that's why, for example, internet was a very useful tool. And now internet, of course, we use internet here, but we use internet at home for Facebook, for remakes. So now one of the main uh, achievements of CERN was internet. So basically what we are doing is just breaking our limits and going beyond and beyond this time. And we are using to achieve these this limits thousands of the most powerful superconductors because we use simple magnets. The magnets will heat will be heated and heat is another kind of energy, so we are losing energy. So we want the superconductors to be as cool as possible, so that's why we need to use liquid helium 1.9 Kelvin. So it's minus 271 Celsius. And this temperature is even colder than the outer space. So the space is a bit warm, it's like around 10 Kelvin. And using this um, superconductor, we can we can reach a magnetic field around 8.3 teslas, which is 10,000 times the Earth's magnetic field. You know that the Earth has a magnetic field around from the South Pole to the North Pole because of the iron nuclear we have in the, in the, inside the Earth. It's a very, very big magnetic field. It's created by a magnet the size of the Earth. But here, we, we have 10,000 times the Earth field. And also, inside the cube, you know that in the, in the universe there is no air. Why the astronauts they need uh, a helmet to, to break. Yeah. So inside we have to reproduce also this vacuum. So it's 10 to 16 atmospheres, 10 to minus 16 atmospheres. So it's 10 less than the vacuum on the moon surface. So you can you cannot imagine how, how big is that. It's unbelievable. And to show that we have species. This is only one detector, we have four. And here you have a person. It's like my size, more or less. This is one person who looked at the detector. So that's why here at CERN, there are not, not only physicists, physicists, because this is only one slide, but there are one, two, three, four. A lot. Okay, it is a detector, and we have four. And it's 20 meters high. So <coughs> all of that is doing with these kind of wires. And all of them has to be perfectly. Uh, Connected. If not, if it doesn't work, everything will, will, will break down. So, most of the best, um, the people who work with electronics, informatics, science computing, particle physics, astrophysics, theoretical physics, mathematicians, engineers, all they have to work together here to create this, these facilities. Last, I want to tell you about, I told you for one girl from Kenya, now he's here in Germany. It's the best thing, it's the Deutschland Electron Synchrotron. It's a synchrotron in Deutschland, so in Germany. There are two cities where the city is one of the oldest and the best particle accelerators in Europe. And they offer a summer program. I, I was part of this summer program in 2010. And what they offer is two months, so July and August. Go to Berlin or Hamburg, you can choose the laboratory. And basically, they, they recover your accommodation for the two months and your travel expenses from here. And then, you told that also you will have like you will be working with scientists. So because you are working, you will have a salary. The salary is not too much in Europe. I think in Uganda it is like around 900 euros, so 1,200 dollars per month. So at the end of the two months, they are like around 2,400 dollars. But I mean, not only because of the money, but it's, it's, it's only one of the best options in Europe. And in the party of this research, it's the top living. And what you have to do is, if you want to apply, is it very suggest around December, January each year, just go on Google and go in this 
www.dot.plessy.de. And if not, you just can. In Google, you have to write summer particle, sorry, summer program desi. So you want to go next summer. So it's not this now because it's too late. Not in May, but for the next one. Um, and that's all. And then it will appear in, in Google something like application form. What basically you will need is two reference letters of your professor, two teachers or professors in the university, like kind of a motivation letter. Why, why do you want to join this program? And how can you offer to this program? What are your main interests in physics? And um, well, then they will ask for some documents, like I don't know, something they, will, they can help you with the visa, with the to apply for visa in Germany and everything. And, yeah, not too much kind of a CV and what did you study in your university and that's all. So you just apply and if not, that's why this is my name, okay? And I will try to help you. This is Javi Fernandez. I L F dot F L. And this is the small community where we're working here in Uganda for two months. It's in South Uganda, close to the border of Congo and Rwanda. In the district of Kisoro, it's a very, very small community, very, very poor. We have no no power, no electricity, uh, just drinking water is difficult to find. No, the newspapers, like New Vision, for example, arrive like one week later. So, yeah. It's a very remote community, but uh, anyway, it was a very good experience. So, I can walk this. I can show you some slides from this. Um, This is a DESI, the laboratory we're talking about. And this is a German. So we have two accelerators, this is Petra, here is a little smaller, and then ERA, and the other main offices, and well. This is the logo, um, yeah. DESI.E is the name. So it's a sign, it's for a conference you gave in Spain. But well, basically, what I, it's like around 1,000 euros per, per month, and it's like a very good opportunity to go into the wild, to you know, the wheel, to create your first steps in your CV, and then apply the further masters or whatever you want to do. And so you can afford that. And also at the end of your stage there, you have to write something like that. This is my summer student program so in Desi in 2000. Oh, sorry, this one not 2010, 2011. And I was working with these people, Mikhail Kasimikov from Russia, and Martin Kodruga from uh, Romania and well the, my my work was the name was simulation of real machines of peace. So it was just simulations about how can we put the, the PI is a photo injector. So how can we is that a trigger to put inside the particles? So just doing some simulation with the computer. Uh, well, you will know a lot of people from, from with me or people from over 20 nationalities. There are people from all around the world. And, um, well, not for you, because you speak English every, every day, but for me, I think in Spain, nobody speaks English. It was a very good excuse to improve my English and learn another, another language, like, for example, Italian. And it's that experience, I improved my CV, and then I improved my English and I learned Italian. And um, it was one of the best personal experiences I've ever made. So, don't hesitate to apply to you. Then there are more laboratories like this one also. This is in Oxford, in England. I was there the next year and 
you know, Oxford University, one of the best universities in physics. So you can apply that in this uh, rather practice laboratory, we have two main accelerators. One is with neutrons, so it's uh, ISIS. This is the, the main the website, sorry. So just Google the same. ISIS summer program 2015, follow the steps. And then we have another accelerator with lights and synchrotron. The name is Diamond. So this is the same. Diamond, rather for up to now, which is Diamond Summer Program 2015. And the facilities are more or less this. This is the, 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 the silver green, the um, synchrotron. And then here, in this white and blue building, the neutron spallation source. So, that's not this the University of Oxford. So, the same picture as before. You can work also on quantum computing, one of the next steps you need. And yeah. And this is what I'm working now. Is that you can, you can see the same green, it's not the solid field, it's the same. The spallation source, neutrons, and the green for life in mountains, in the Alps. And this is the wind, the nuclear reactor, and they continue. So, any questions? Please. I think we first uh, give him a big clap. Uh, thank you, Javi, for sharing with us. Thank you. A lot of information. Now uh, they gave me, the coordinator for seminars gave me the opportunity to see if your question is true. But ask him any question you want, uh, what you want to know so that we can conclude the seminar. Please, anything you want to know? Yeah. Uh, I have around two or three questions. The first one is about the neutrinos. Yeah. Are they Inside the quarks? No, they are different particles. They are also fundamental particles, and but like quarks, but they are not inside the quarks. The quarks is a. We know that the quarks are inside the protons and neutrons, but we believe, we do believe that the, the quarks are fundamental particles in matter, like neutrinos, but are different particles. So the quarks have properties and neutrinos as a normal one. Okay. Then the other thing is. I would like to explain to me something about this gravitation, how these small particles lead to gravitation. Because in the presentation it was like during the interaction of these small particles, yeah. then you can have the gravitation. I don't know how you can explain better. Well, I, I, I don't think, I, I don't know if I understand your question, but basically we, we, you're talking about quantum dimensions. Like for example, we, we want to move all the quarks and uh, photons. There's no, we, don't, we cannot understand the gravitation at this level. We don't have a quantum gravitation theory. And that we are trying to fight to an Einstein in the first years of the, century, the last century. He tried to, to propose some quantum theories about gravitation and he couldn't. And still we are trying to find them. But at this small level, we, the only thing we can do is just explain why particles have mass and is that because of the Higgs boson. So you have to think about the, the Higgs boson. Like, um, okay, I cannot do it because I don't have the, but it's a more or less easy to understand. The, the real theory, mathematics, with the, for physicists and mathematics, is quite complicated, but the idea is if you put sugar on this table, and you throw like um, a, a, a ball of paper because of the sugar, the ball will be uh, the speed of the, the ball's speed will be decreased because of the, the sugar. So this, you have to, to think about the sugar like the Higgs bosons particles in the, in the in the universe, and all the universe is full of these particles. And if you are an electron. You have a, a small, small mass. It's only 0 0.5 mega electron volts. So you can, because of your mass is small, you can 
interact just a little bit with the Higgs boson, and that's why your mass is just small. But if you are a proton, so your mass is like, um, I don't remember the mass of the 900 mega electrons, you are very heavy, so you will pass your, your interactions more because of your slow speed, more Higgs boson particles will be attached to you, and it's more difficult to you to through this uh, sea of Higgs boson particles. For example, light. What about the photons? They have no mass. That's why they are the fastest particles because they don't interact with the Higgs boson, and why they have no, no mass. So this is as far as we can understand the, the Higgs boson mechanism, but not about the quantum gravity theory because we don't have it. I mean, if you can do it, you will, you will, you will have your novel. <laughs> Now, the last thing is about what you say, Sandy, about the internet. Yeah. We use internet, but for me, I want to explain to me how does internet come about. <laughs> I think I, I can answer. No, the idea why you talked about internet is that because of the data sun being too much, that's when guys started looking for a way of having a cloud sourcing or let's say cloud saving yeah. and uh, instead of working with floppies from one office and then you insert the floppy then you download and then you go back with it they had to think of how to share so that's how the world world web came about on how to share data between people without actually physically going there and that was the emergence of the internet basically there are a lot of millions and millions of uh, connections fiber optics connections so everybody is connected, but the internet has not an owner, like I'm the owner of the internet. So I can decide if the internet works today or not. It's, implos it's in almost impossible, or absolutely impossible to break the internet, all the connections at the same time. You can break some networks in some countries or some connections, or, but you cannot break the internet as a whole. So what you have seen is that, okay, internet is, you have a router, and the router has uh, sent some waves. And these ways is information, and because of the fiber optic, you can connect to, to one computer to another and change information. But it's like, the, how is possible that if I take my mobile phone and talk with you, even if you are in another country? Yeah. Yes, it's some satellites, and the waves travel to the satellite, and then, okay, so I have to send back these waves with information, so my voice to your phone. But internet is just, you have to think about, yes. Yeah, trying to put all the information somewhere, but not physically, because you know you have to carry with this way. And then you have to access, you can access, and you can download, so you can make Yeah. Okay. Don't think too much about it. It's too complicated. Yes. Uh, any other burning questions so that we can conclude this? You have seen the, the link. I will share it again with you about those who would want to apply. Always apply to these things. You never know. You can always For free, yeah. Uh, the, the worst thing can happen is they say, sorry, we cannot offer an opposition for you this time. But there are a lot of laboratories, a lot of uh, research centers, so you just send your information, send your details. And the, the laboratories need people, need the students, but they, want, they need to know you. They, they will not come to Ghana to your house. Hello, I'm the, I'm the president of this uh, laboratory. You want to join us? You have to send your details. And then, okay, yes, good. If not, don't worry. Let's go to the next one. That's it. Last one? Yeah. Uh, you talked about matter. Yeah. You say it's not visible on the time of this computer. Yeah. And uh, you saw that the computer simulates yeah. the <laughs> So how did they distinguish them from other particles? Yeah, we know that that matter is in the universe. We don't know what it is, but we know that it's there because how our matter behaves around this uh, unknown matter indicates that there is something that we call dark matter. That is like, the name is dark matter because you cannot see them. It's dark, it's something that you cannot like, switch off. That is my laptop, you cannot see anything. But you know there's something because you can feel some, something like, it's like a black hole, you know? You, a black hole, you cannot see it. Black hole. It's a very, it's a, we have mass, but how gravity or how the, our uh, forces, like gravity and magnetism, uh, interact with them is completely different. We don't know how, we are, we are trying to understand that. 
but the the matter behaves differently around the dark matter that does in around the matter, around the dark matter. So that's why we know that the we don't know how. We don't know what it is. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, you've had the issue why you wanted to talk to us mainly. Uh, what I found important was the opportunities that you guys have and also to have a different perspective of how things are done somewhere else. Uh, he's told, he's showed you that he works in the sun, as you've seen. So if you wanted to ask anything about how this thing is built, you've seen it. And it's different from if I started telling you that there is a, a place where they ride bicycles, I'll be theoretical and guess it. So I guess, uh, thank you, Henry. Thank you for your And uh, I think it ends here for now. If you have any questions, you saw his email, but if you have any, any questions still, I can help out in terms of how you can contact him and uh, how you can uh, benefit. But try these opportunities when they come up. Okay. Okay, thank you very much.